If you've tried to deal with time zones in the past, you probably know how much of a pain they can be. But in Rails 2.1, we have much better time zone support. So dealing with time zones is really easy. Let me show you. To start us off, let's take a look at a few new rake tasks we have at our, at our disposal dealing with time zones. So these all just list various time zones. And probably the one of the most useful ones is this one right here, time zones local. This will look at your current system clock and try to list some time zones that it looks like you're currently in. So um, I'm just in the Pacific time, so this is what I can use in my Rails config file. Let's hop over there now. So here we are in our environment.rb file, and here we can set our default time zone for our Rails application. To do that, we just call config.timezone, and then we could just set it to the time zone that was displayed in our rig task. Uh, this does a few things. It sets our default time zone to this value, and in our database, it will now store times as a universal time, UTC. And when it fetches them, it will uh, always translate it for us into our time zone that we specified here. This way we can easily change our time zone we're using without having to alternate our database information and it will all just work for us. Um, one of the gotchas here though is if you're adding this to an established application you want to make sure that all your times in your database are universal time or UTC so that um, this will function properly and it won't screw up your times. Let me demonstrate here exactly what I mean. Uh, so here we have a product model, and let me create a new product. Uh, let's call it puzzle. And we also have a release at column here. So this time that we're submitting here is Pacific time, because that's what we chose in our config file. And then when we actually click submit and it gets saved to the database, Rails automatically translates it to universal time and stores that information in the database. And then when it displays the time here again, Rails translates that back to Pacific time when it fetches it from the database. So let me hop into the console uh, so that we can see exactly what we mean here. So let me fetch our first product and uh, our release at time. So this is the Pacific time because Active Record translates that for us. But we can call before typecast to see actually what's stored in the database, and that is the universal time here. Uh, so Rails kind of handles this automatically in the background for us, so we don't have to worry about it. Uh, this gives us a lot of flexibility in that we can change the time zone whenever we want, and that will automatically be translated every time we store and fetch information from the database. Let's try something a little more challenging. Let's say we have a user registration page, and we want to give them the option to select what time zone they're currently in. Um, I'm just going to set it to Eastern Time and click Sign Up. And so when it signs up, uh, we want it to automatically switch over to that time zone whenever it displays or whenever we edit a time. And that's actually really easy to do in Rails 2.1, uh, as I'm going to show you. So this time right here that we're displaying is now in the Eastern Time. So real quick here, let me show you the steps I took to, to do this. Uh, first, I just generated some basic authentication using the RESTful authentication plugin. And then after that, I just created this migration file for adding a time zone column to our user's table. And it needs to be of type string. This is important. So it just stores the name of the time zone in here that the user selects when they register. And then in our user's model here, because I'm using attribute accessible, I need to add our time zone column to this. So that way, when the user registers, they are able to set this column. Otherwise, it just won't, won't be able to be set through the users. All right, and going on to the registration form here to make our time zone select menu, it's very simple using this little time zone select helper method. And then the second argument here is just specifying which time zones you want to appear up at the top of the list. And so the last final step is we need some way to actually change the time zone when the user selects it when they're logged in. And we can do that in our application controller through a before filter. So we just I just created a before filter here. And what this does is that's time.zone equal to the user's current time zone. Now remember this is just a string. So time.zone is just a way to change the time zone uh, from the default of what you set 
in your config. So this just changes it dynamically. And then only change that if the current user is logged in. And that's just the four simple steps I took to actually build this entire um, time zone select process. And now because it, we changed the current time zone, Rails will automatically translate the time to the user's time zone when the information is fetched or updated with the database. So it's just very cool and an extremely easy and convenient way to actually build in time zone support into your Rails application. Credit for this awesome new time zone feature in Rails 2.1 goes to Jeff Busing, and he's written up a nice article uh, detailing all the features that are available to you when working with the time zones in Rails 2.1. So I encourage you to give it a read, and I'll post the link on my show notes at railscast.com.